Hello and welcome to our second Contour for Windows tutorial. In our first tutorial we covered how to install and register the software. And in this tutorial we'll be providing a general overview of the screenwriting process as it applies to Contour so that we can start structuring your first screenplay. Let's get started. In most cases when a writer wants to write a screenplay, they'll organize their thoughts on paper or on a computer by writing an outline, a step outline, a treatment, or by using a piece of software such as Contour. Before they begin, they usually, but not always, have a firm understanding of screenplay structure. It's pretty universally accepted that a screenplay is comprised of three acts. The first act, the second act, and the third act. Now the first act and the third act are usually about the same length and the second act is usually as long as the first and the third acts combined. So say for instance you have a script that is about 108 pages long. Your first act and your third act would be 27 pages and the second act would be 54 pages. Of course there are variations on the theme depending on the story and the writer but that's pretty much the long and the short of it. Now, in the contour method, we divide the second act in half, and there's a reason for it. Now, the contour method of screenwriting is loosely based on the hero's journey. The hero's journey, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, defines six archetypes that real-life people live by. The innocent, the orphan, the magician, the wanderer, the martyr, and the warrior. The theory is that people make certain choices about how to live their lives and how to respond to various issues based on that particular archetype. Now Contour utilizes four out of the six archetypes. The orphan, the wanderer, the warrior, and the martyr. Understanding how the protagonist moves through those phases during the course of a story will bring you extremely close to a character-driven script. The hero is, of course, the main character of our story, a.k.a. the protagonist. Now, the orphan is the point in our story where our character is either literally or figuratively an orphan. In Home Alone, Kevin has both of his parents, but he's just unique and misunderstood. Now, except for the cockroach, which can withstand anything, Wally has been left alone on Earth to build walls by himself. And in The Dark Knight, Bruce Wayne is not only an orphan, but is also considered an outcast. In some way, shape, or form, the orphan is singular. This orphan stage comprises Act 1. Now, all throughout Act 1, something starts softly and subtly and becomes so loud, so obvious, and so compelling that our protagonist has to and must respond. That's the call to adventure. Now, this call to adventure can come in different ways, from Indiana Jones finally deciding to go after the Ark of the Covenant, to Charlie Bartlett's decision to play high school psychiatrist and dispense medication to his peers, or Luke Skywalker's decision to become a Jedi Knight just like his father. But the call to adventure is made and by the end of Act 1 our protagonist has no choice but to accept it. Now Act 1 ends with something that's the core to your screenplay, the central question. The central question is a question once answered ends our story. Will Sheriff Brody kill the shark? Will Indiana Jones find the Ark of the Covenant and survive those mean old Nazis? Or will Bruce Willis's character find out why Haley Joel Osment's character in The Sixth Sense sees dead people? Remember that once you answer the question in your script, all that's left is to add a little denouement, slap on the end, and you're done. At least until the rewrite. In the first half of Act 2, the main character is morphed from the orphan into the wanderer. It's here that our protagonist will encounter friends, allies, and pick up information that will assist him in his quest. He will have ups and downs, he'll take one step forward only to encounter some sort of obstacle or roadblock, and all during this time those roadblocks and obstacles will become more and more difficult. 
For instance, in the movie Wally, after Wally hitches a ride into space on the spaceship carrying Eve, Wally finds Eve, and then what happens? She's whisked away to be decontaminated. And if you've seen the movie, you'll notice that Wally finds and loses Eve several times, with each situation Wally finding himself becoming more and more severe. Okay, now we're in the second half of Act 2, where our protagonist, the Wanderer, turns into the Warrior. Now, by hook or by crook, there's no doubt about it, he's thrust either willingly or unwillingly into a battle. He has to fight for what he believes in. The recent Oscar-winning film Slumdog Millionaire is an excellent example. In the first half of Act 2, Jamal is growing up in the slums, learning the art of the con to survive, and searching for the love of his life, Latika. But in the second half of the second act, he finds Latika only to lose her again thanks to his brother Salim. But now he realizes the only way he's going to find her, hopefully for the last time, is to go on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? and to go all the way, no matter what it takes. Finally, we're into Act 3. It's do or die time for our protagonist, who now morphs into the martyr, where he goes through a death, either literally or figuratively, and gives it all up to achieve his goal and to answer the central question, which we set up in Act 1. A great example is in the movie The Poseidon Adventure. Our protagonist, Reverend Scott, has led what's left of his ragtag group of survivors up to the upside-down engine room, and then suddenly, almost on cue, one of the smokestacks blows up and there's hot scalding steam now blocking their entrance to the propeller shaft. The only problem is that the valve is out of reach, and if it can be reached, there's really no way back. And guess who has to volunteer for the job? You guessed it, Reverend Scott, our protagonist. He makes a brave leap, grabs the valve, struggles to turn it off, tells the rest of the group to go down, and then he takes the big plunge. The survivors are saved, and they fly away. End credits. Let's get back to the central question, because that's what Act 3 is all about. In Home Alone, will Kevin defeat the dim-witted robbers and save the house? Will Wally find Eve and live happily ever after? In the Dark Knight, will Batman defeat the Joker and save Gotham City? And in The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, will Frodo destroy the Ring and save Middle-earth? Act 3 is where these questions are answered once and for all. So how do we incorporate these into the Contour software? Stay tuned. Okay, so that's it for our second Contour tutorial. For more information, consult your user's guide or contact us on the web. We're happy to help. But for now, though, write some good stuff today.